Ohanes Indigo have condemned the shoot at sight order given to Nigerian soldiers in the southeast. They advise the federal government to seek possible peaceful options that are the only solution to guarantee national unity and peaceful coexistence. The group lamented that subnational consciousness or ethnocentric nationalism, which is a dangerous form of nationalism to national unity, has taken over Nigeria. Also, a former governor of Anambra State, Peter Obi, has alleged that a present governor in the southeast is plotting to blackmail him. Well, joining us to have this conversation is former president or the president of Ohanese Ndibo, FCT chapter Odozi Modozi, and political analyst Francis Chilaka. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, viewers. All right, great. I'm going to start with you, Odozi. Um, I'm going to make reference to what's been happening in Imo State first and foremost. We saw that video of um, prisoners who were released in the middle of the night. We saw the videos of police stations being burned and ransacked. We've also seen many more videos coming from Imo State. We've seen the situation in the southeast and, of course, ESN versus um, the government and um, Ibuweagu. I mean, there's been a, it's a potpourri of issues in the southeast. And Ohanese is out here today saying Mr. President has to look for peaceful ways of dealing with the issue. Uh, why all of a sudden is the Southeast some sort of a hotbed? Thank you. Um, good evening, viewers. The issue in the Southeast today is very, very sad. And uh, the way security is dilapidating in the Southeast is very disheartening. And uh, it's unfortunate that a place that used to be very peaceful is suddenly turning into a theater of the absurd. Just two months ago, we saw the sad incident of invasion of the police headquarters and the correctional facilities in Uwari Imo State. And uh, unfortunately, people came to blame it on the group of self-determination activists the IPOB and uh, the security wing called ESM. But this group has come out to say openly that they are not involved in this sad incident. And there are videos which are being called that people say that this video should be made public. These people that came to do this, to commit this heinous act, we are at the roundabout, if you know where the very well, the roundabout, the widow roundabout is just opposite the government house. And they were there singing for over an hour. If you know Imo State very well, you know that the OB is a military cantonment is not far. In fact, it's less than 10 minutes drive from the military cantonment to that spot. And on your way to Onitia, just before um, uh, um, uh, I irritated, you have a military a, a, a police squadron there. Why wasn't security called up? And now you're blaming it on some people. And I think we shouldn't pin it on anybody. It's a wrong notion to pin it on any group or individual at this point. But why do you even think... As, but, but I'm sorry, I'm sorry to come in. As, why do you think that... that the, they're not involved. Yes, I, I, I'm sorry. Why do you no. think that they're pinning it on ESN or IPOP? Why do you think that the government is so certain that ESN or IPOB is responsible for this because you're saying that they're being they're being wrongly the accused. Let's take it from the blunder of the of the of the former IGP, who who fortunately as he was committing that blunder was flushed out of the system. He, he without investigation, which is against international best standards. The man came up to say that I you know IPOB did this. Does that show? Does that make sense from the viewpoint of a, of investigative? Uh, Policing, it doesn't. It doesn't show intelligence. You get the point. That is, so it's, it's a clear thing that these guys have said we didn't do it, and somebody just came out in less than eight hours after this sad incident to say these guys did it. I think we should look beyond this. We should look towards getting to know the root cause of what is happening in the southeast. Is somebody somewhere trying to inflate with the southeast? Is somebody somewhere interested in making the South is a place of rubbles? 
Is somebody somewhere trying to make the South is desolate? If this question was find answers, then we come back to the current to the site order by the president through the chief of army staff on agitators in the southeast. I don't think it's the best way forward. Nigeria at this point in time, in fact, the West African subject on the Sahel, down the Sahel today, they're having a lot of crisis and we shouldn't ignite more crisis by inciting, by giving an order as heinous as this. Is. Okay. I'm, I'm, the best way, just as the, just as just, just, the ambassador B also have prepared, is to look for ways that will bring amicable resolution to whatever is the crisis, which is simple. Cease marginalization, come in with fair play and justice, and you'll see things get to their, to their normal. And okay. Things will, I think everything will come to normal. That's it. Let's leave it at that. So. Let me, let me go to Francis. Francis, let's talk about the issue of the ESN. Um, when the issue of Ibubo Agu came up, when the governors of the Southeast came together to bring out that outfit, which is more like a, a paramilitary organization, um, they, they're also like a vigilante uh, um, association, just like we have uh, in the Southwest and, of course, in the North, a, a militia of sorts. Um, there was a statement from... Um, IPOP saying that the government was trying to recruit um, these men to spy on members of IPOB and, and if they were going to be sending them as spies that they should be ready to meet their maker. Now, statements such as this could also um, make the government or security agencies feel that maybe the e um, IPOB or ESN are not really there in the interest of the people. Oh, well, this whole thing about ESN, the Black Group, um, agitation for uh, Biafra and Holocaust, is it the result of continued merit of the Southeast? It's part of bad government that starts from the presidency down to the state. Have to be local I like to play the political politics. That is why I always tell everyone who is the government responsible for their actions. If we do not have a government to do, I'm so sorry, Francis. I'm so sorry. Your connection is really bad. We're unable to hear you. So I'm going to go back to Modozi um, again until we're able to establish connection with you. <laughs> What does he, I want to ask you the same question I just asked him. I'm sure you heard me. With the statement that came from IPOB and ESN, um, when Ibuwago was put together by the Southeast governors to deal with the issue of insecurity in their region, um, the IPOB had said that the government was setting up these guys as spies to come spy on them, and that if they were coming as spies, they should be ready to meet their maker. Of course, that, that, that spells some form of violence. And why is that not one of the reasons why security agencies would be having them on their watch list? Thank you. <laughs> right, thank you, sister. But I, I'll ask you a question. I will come rhetorically to ask you one. How many of the members of the Abubago have you seen been fallen by either the IPOB or the ESN? At none. As we talk now, these guys came up, ESN came up as a result of the inability, unwillingness of the leaders of the Southeast to come up with a security approach to the prevalent issue of kidnapping, of heinous murder, of rape of women, of invasion of land in the Southeast. That was why this ESN came up. And the cry of, of the people of the Southeast over the years, calling on the governor to call this security, this is, is imagining security. But now the, go the, but now the governors of the Southeast have, come, have been awake to their responsibilities and have brought you a bubeago okay. 
Why should a Bubagu, if your real interest, and, and please don't get me wrong, if the real interest of the ESN was to protect the people of the South is because their governors were not alive to their responsibility, now the governments have become alive to their responsibility. Why would a Bubagu become a threat of sorts to you instead of aligning with them to work for the betterment of your people if really that was the core mandate in the first place? Okay, good. In as much as I'm not, make, I'm not being a spokesman for ESN or I, or but it sounds like it. It is natural that for a space that has been left open for yes, it's for a space that has been left open for quite some time, and somebody is filling that space. I think what the governor should have done at that material time when they came up to this Ebubago issue was very likely or not have a wide consultation. Why beyond IPOB, beyond ESN, they should have got it a wider consultation. Not just make it a caucus team, not just make it a friends team, not just make it an elitist club team. At this point, the people need to know what is happening. And the way the governors of the Southeast have, have acted before then has made them suspects. And you don't blame the ESN, you don't blame the IPOB people for making that threat but good enough they know they are limited they've not they, they they're just a mere threat and they will not do it because the the, the, the loss of one evil soul means a lot to evil generations hmm. so it's, they will not do it it's, but it's a sound of warning it's the sound of displeasure is they were speaking the mind of the populace they were speaking the mind of the people on the streets so now that we however, have now that we have a shooter site as order, as the, as the, as the goes on, we'll let us see how they how it out. Well, going forward, now we have a shooter site order by the president. We also have governors who have united to bring a bubayagu. But then there's an increasing attack on security outlets and security agencies. It's even spilled into River State, which has caused Governor Wiki to have a dust to done curfew. Um, what should be done in the states, across the states in the southeast, to bring some form of reconciliation and peace, to bring some form of, um, I don't know, unity amongst the people, because it seems to be too many voices. And of course, Ohanese is also speaking about the fact that there is a, a huge deployment, according to you, um, of northern soldiers to, the, to the, the, the southeast. And you think that this is a problem? It's a big problem. You see, sending in massive number of troops into the southeast is by every standard threatening. By every standard is threatening. It keeps the people uneasy. I think what the government should do, other than war war, they should judge up. I think at this stage, what the government needs is consultations, 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 deliberation. Come down from your high horse. Talk to these people. They are your citizens. They are your citizens. Dialogue with them. Know what the agitation is all about. Know why they are grieved. Know why they are pained. Don't look at anybody as if this person is lesser than you. No matter who, no matter your strength and no matter the infallibility of, 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 of your personality, the young person out there might have one or two points against you. You might know one or two of the weaknesses. Let us not get this thing wrong. Let us dialogue. I'm happy today, even the even the the the, 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 the southern governors met today in Asaba, in Asaba. They came up with an issue that let they need a dialogue in the, in the national level. I saw some women today agitating for dialogue. Nigeria at the stage with dialogue. Hmm. As for what is happening in river states, it's unfortunate that our brother, yes, on weekend. Out of uh, his, um, how, I don't know how to put it, he led himself into this. You see, there are, we have, there are other people that have conjures, conjures, um, uh, boundaries to the southeast. Why are their places not integrated? But is it, not, is, is it not the governor's the job have, to protect his people? His priority, his number one priority is his people. Anyway, we're well, out of time. Mean, we're really out of time. You should not bring in ant infested wood to your place. Okay. It is either by your action or by, or by your inaction, by your utterances or, 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 or otherwise. Well, we, it's wrong. We're not happy about what is happening to the security agencies, but the government should dialogue. 
Look out for these people. Look out for people that know them and dialogue with them. Okay. Well, Odozi Wadozi is the president of Hanez Indigo FCT chapter, and he's been speaking with us. We apologize. Uh, Francis Chilaka dropped off the radar because of his internet connection. Thank you, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. Thank you for staying with us. It's been Plus Politics, and I am Mariana Cohn. Have a good evening.